In this lesson, we'll discuss how you can tell when a differential equation is separable. A separable equation is a first-order differential equation in which the expression for dy over dx can be factored as a function of x times a function of y. In other words, it can be written in the form dy over dx is equal to g of x times f of y. The question reads, are the following differential equations separable? Starting with a, we have y prime is equal to x over 1 minus the square root of y. The first thing that we have to do for all of these questions, as you can tell, is rewrite them so that instead of y prime, we have dy over dx. So starting with question a, we have dy over dx. And to tell whether it's separable or not, we'll try to separate the y terms from the x terms. So x over 1 minus the square root of y. The first thing that I'll try is multiply both sides by what's on the denominator position. And if I do that, I end up with 1 minus the square root of y dy over dx is equal to x on the right side. If I multiply both sides now by dx, in other words, clear the denominator, I'll end up with the following expression, where I have 1 minus the square root of y times dy is equal to x dx. Notice that we have separated the y terms from the x terms, therefore this is separable. Moving on to question b, we have y prime is equal to x plus y. Once again, I'll rewrite it as dy over dx is equal to x plus y. And notice that no matter what we do here, we can't separate the x and the y. For example, if I move this y over, we end up with dy over dx minus y is equal to x. If I multiply now both sides by dx like I did in question a, this dx will disappear in this term, but it will end up reappearing in this term and over here. So this one is not separable. Moving on to question c, after changing this to dy over dx, if I multiply both sides by what's in the denominator position, I'll have the y terms on the left side and the x terms on the right side. So this one is separable. What about question D? We have dy over dx is equal to ln xy. Using the rules of logarithms, I can split this product, x and y, as ln x plus ln y. But we'll run into the same situation that we ran into in question B. If I move that term over, I can never really isolate or separate the x and y terms. So this one is a no. In question E, we have y prime is equal to y times sine x plus xy. Let's see what we can do with this one. We have dy over dx is equal to y sine x plus xy. What happens if I divide the left and the right side by y? The y's here will cancel out and we'll have a y at the bottom. So now on the right side of this equation we have sine x plus x. And on the left side we have dy over y times dx. Multiplying both sides now by dx, I'll end up with a dx on the right side. Therefore, this one is separable. In question f, we have y prime plus x to the power of 3 plus 1 plus y to the power of 2, x to the power of 3 plus y. Let's see what we can do here. dy over dx, this is for f, is equal to x to the power of 3 plus 1 plus y to the power of 2, x to the power of 3 plus y squared. Let's see if we can factor some of these things out. I'm going to factor out y squared here, and if I do that, I'll end up with y squared x to the power of 3 plus 1. And over here, we have x to the power of 3 plus 1. Now, if I factor out x to the power of 3 plus 1 from here and here, I end up with x to the power of 3 plus 1, y to the power of 2, plus 1. At this point, I would divide both sides by y squared plus 1. That would end up in the denominator position. And then multiplying both sides by dx would have the dx on the right side. So this one is separable. Moving on to question g, we have y prime is equal to y times e to the power of sine x plus cosine y. I'll rewrite it over here dy over dx is equal to 
y times e to the power of sine x. And I'll separate what's in the exponents. I'll write down e to the power of sine x times e to the power of cosine y. If you write it out like this, and if you knew that, you can now divide both sides by y and e to the power of cosine y. You'll be left with e to the power of sine x on the right side, and then multiplying both sides by dx means that this one is separable. Finally, in our last question, this should read h. We have dy over dx. And over here, we'll use the rules of logs, where I'll write this as a product, y times ln x, divide both sides by y, and then multiply both sides by dx, suggests that this equation is also separable. And there you have it. That is how to tell when a differential equation is separable.